Hi there and welcome to Simon Anderson Photography and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about depth of field so stay tuned. So how do we change aperture on our cameras? Well I'm going to use my Nikon D7100 for the, this example. Uh, you will need to check your um, instruction booklet depending on what camera you have. Uh, first of all I'm going to switch it on. This is the LCD top plate. We can see the shutter speed and the aperture. Uh, this is the scene dial on, on this side of the camera. At the moment it's in auto, but I'm gonna switch it across to aperture priority. And that way you can just set the aperture. And in aperture priority, the camera will sort out the shutter speed for you for the correct exposure. So yeah, we use the thumb scroll wheels to scroll through the apertures. This lens goes from 4.5 and I can scroll all the way through F8, F9, F16, and up to F25 on this lens. That's how we change the aperture on your camera. So what is depth of field? Depth of field is basically what's acceptably in focus between two points in a scene. So what is depth of field good for? Uh, it depends what you're shooting, but I use two subjects to sort of explain it. One has been portraits uh, and the other have been landscapes, but um, it's used in all parts of photography. But um, if you think of portraits for a start, uh, sometimes you want to isolate your subject from the background. So you want all your background blown out of focus. Uh, if you want landscapes, you might want everything in focus. And this is all controlled by the depth of field. Once you've learned this technique, it's going to be useful, useful for all of your photography. It's used in all subjects depth of field, whether it's still life, product photography, macro photography. Uh, you will be working with depth of field in all of these things to you know, get more in focus or less in focus to isolate your subjects, whether it's a bottle or some food on a, a kitchen counter or whether it's an insect on the flower or a flower itself. You know, if you want to isolate the flower from the background, you would use a wide aperture. Now, you don't have to have a 1.8 lens or 1.4 lens or a very expensive lens to do this. You can do this with, let's say, a 5.6 lens. You just have to get your subject closer to the lens and focus on your subject and go to f5.6. It's obviously not as dreamy bokeh as say the wider apertures as f1.8 but you can still do it so you can do it even with a kit lens um, also you know if you want wanted to, a wide aperture lens you can go for something like the 50 mil the nifty 50 uh, it goes you know an f1.8 lens is around 100 pounds which is you know every photographer should have the 50 in their bag and you can do some very creative wide aperture photography with with that lens also let me just show you i'm going to show you another picture and uh, i'm going to focus on some leaves on a branch and as you can see i use started off with f 1.8 which is a wide aperture and uh been a lower number it's going to be less in focus but as we go through the f-stops up to f16 for this lens as you can see the background is becoming in focus so what's so important about depth of field well depth of field is very important for if you want to be creative or knowing what's in focus and out of focus uh, for different subjects if you're doing portraits like me here now um, with this forest scene behind me uh, you can see uh, f1.8 it's blown out of focus but you might want to do a landscape and you want the whole scene in focus you might want the rock at the beginning of, or the front edge of the river uh, in focus but your eye leading out to the mountains in the background and you'll be able to see everything well depth of field is important for all these things it's also important for things like macro photography still life photography product photography uh, anything really anything uh, you just need to know how to control depth of field to get what's in focus and what's out of focus and how do we do that well aperture is one of the main things uh, for controlling depth of field on the lens i used for the shot of the forest scene i was using a nikon 85 mil which is a, a fixed focal length length lens which is a, a 1.8 lens which is a wide aperture or if you think a small number 
means a, a smaller depth of field. So F 1.8, a small number, would have a shallower depth of field. But if you wanted more depth of field or more in focus of your scene, uh, you need to use a higher F stop or a higher number, say F 11, F 16, F 22. So the higher the number, the higher the depth of field or more depth of field, so more in focus. Uh, also, you don't have to use expensive wide aperture lenses to get a shallow depth of field. You can use it, your kit lens, your 18 to 55, if it's a f5.6. But to get a, a shallow depth of field, you might have to get your subject quite close to your lens and focus quite closely and zoom all the way in to blur the background. Or another way to get into wide aperture photography, like uh, an f1.8, is the Nikon or the Canon or any other version of the 50mm, the Nifty 50. And that, you can probably pick up that lens for about £100, which is really cheap, and every photographer should have one in their bag. So with a wide aperture, you can get all them dreamy, bocalicious backgrounds uh, for the portrait, so you can isolate your subject. Um, and yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's great fun. You can be very creative with it. Uh, to show you the effects of uh, depth of field, um, I've got this forest scene behind me. Uh, this was shot f1.8, and as you can see, the background uh, is blurry, that bocalicious thing that everyone wants, the bokeh or bokeh. Now, if you want, the reason why it might have a blurry background is to have your subject as the main subject is in focus and everything out of focus is to isolate your subject. Now, if you wanted more of your scene in focus, you'd stop down the apertures, as you can see here, and I'll put the F number up in the top screen or corner of the screen somewhere so you can see what aperture it is as I rotate through the pictures. Uh, to make as the picture gets sharper so it goes from f1.8 and it goes all the way through the apertures all the way to f7.1 to f11 to f16 now f16 is the highest aperture uh, for the lens I'm using the Nikon 85mm but like I said some apertures go even further also you might want to focus on the background and have the foreground out of focus uh, so if I show you the picture of the forest scene in focus and then I'm going to blur myself as you can see I'm blurry um, and this is just to give an example so you might want to focus once again on a statue or someone further back and then have the foreground like some flowers in the foreground all out of, fo out of focus um, I'll show you an example now of a picture I took of my daughter using flowers. My daughter is behind the flowers, she's in focus, and the flowers are in the foreground and out of focus. So once again, that's another creative way of using depth of field. It's not always about what's closest to the camera, you could be focusing on what's further away from the camera as well. So that's another thing to try. So another example I wanted to show you is of a, a picture I took in London of Westminster Bridge and Big Ben. I used a, a wide angled lens, which means I was gonna get more in focus straight away, but also with a higher f-stop, I think I was using around f13 for this one, uh, there's more in focus. So combined with the wide angle and the, the high f-stop number, I've got a, a big depth of field. So as you can see from this picture, the pavement and the road, you can see all the detail in in there. It's, it's got the focus right from the edge of the frame leading all the way to the, the background, which is Big Ben. So Big Ben's relatively in focus as well. So this is a good example for perhaps a, a landscape type shot to show you how far depth of field can go. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hoped it helped a little bit. It was just a basic overview of depth of field. Um, if you like this uh, video, please leave a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to leave a thumbs down, but leave a comment below why, because I'd love to know. Click the subscribe button, which appears somewhere on this screen, and also the notification bell for new uploads, so you don't miss anything in the future. So thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you soon. See you later.